Supreme Convention is so important for the life of the Knights of Columbus. It's a time when we come together, the family of the Knights of Columbus, to celebrate this great mission that Father McGivney gave to us. August 2023, the Knights of Columbus held its 141st Supreme Convention in Orlando, Florida. 2,000 delegates and their families gathered together for a Monday evening award ceremony and welcome concert featuring the band Scythian. Soon may the wellman come to bring the sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tongue is done, we'll take our leave and go seeing the room come together. That's one of my favorite things as a musician. And that's really essentially what our faith is. Last time for the gypsy band. Come on, Nazareth. At the award session, the 2023 International Family of the Year Award was presented to the Cabrera family of St. Thomas More Council 7431 in Mooresville, Indiana. This only motivates us to become better Catholics, better parents, better disciples of Christ. Viva Cristo Rey! The Blessed Michael McGivney Medal was awarded to Father John Grace, an Augustinian priest who has served the order for more than two decades in numerous capacities, including as assistant to the Supreme Chaplain Bishop John Noonan celebrated the convention opening mass with 50 bishops, including three cardinals from nations in which the order is active. I mean, honestly, the opening mass, it was like a little slice of heaven. The music was otherworldly. The homily was fantastic. And just to see the church alive, all of the bishops, the cardinals, all of the priests, the religious sisters and the lay people, it just really buoyed all of our spirits. The largest media turnout in the history of the Order allowed the Knights' inspiring story of faith and service to be shared with a global audience. In his annual State of the Order address, Supreme Knight Patrick Kelly offered an inspiring message for the more than two million Brother Knights around the world. We had a year of faith in action and heroic charity. My Brother Knights, thank you for everything you did and everyone you served. We've stepped up in so many ways, all two million Knights of Columbus. We donated $185 million to charity and devoted 49 million hours to volunteer service. We protected Catholic families with a record $121 billion of life insurance in force. This year marks the 20th anniversary of our wheelchair initiative. All told, in the past two decades, we've given more than 127,000 wheelchairs to those in need. We also gave more than $5.3 million in the wake of natural disasters in the past year. In the last five years alone, Brother Knights have contributed over $21 million to Special Olympics. Last year, within 36 hours of Russia's invasion, we established the Ukraine Solidarity Fund. We called on councils to host fundraisers and rallied others to support this worthy cause. 
18 months later, we have raised over $21 million. Would all our knights from Ukraine and Poland please stand up? You are a sterling example of first in faith and charity. At our convention last year, I announced a major new pro-life initiative called ASAP, Aid and Support After Pregnancy. We set a bold target of $5 million going entirely to pregnancy centers and maternity homes. We didn't meet that goal. We exceeded it by more than $1 million. And the Knights of Columbus will continue to fight until the right to life is fully restored. Times have changed. The culture is growing more hostile to our faith. In these difficult times, so much depends on our commitment to our mission. Will we stand for the truth without apology, without counting the cost? Our answer is the same as Father McGivney's. Yes, we will point the world to Jesus Christ. Last year, I announced a new initiative focused on prayer, formation, and fraternity. It's called CORE, and I believe it's laying a foundation for our future. CORE will be a game changer. The name is Latin for heart, and it reflects the reality that faith and fraternity are the heart of who we are. The Supreme Knight also announced the creation of a new men's Bible study, the first of its kind, and a new family and marriage video series. Initiatives aimed at making the order first in faith, as well as charity, a vision resonating with Brother Knights. It's a really exciting time to be a Knight. A lot of positive things are happening in the organization. One of the things I'm very excited about with the core initiative is bringing faith to the center of the Knights. That gives me hope. Tuesday evening, more than 2,000 knights, delegates, their families, and guests celebrated together at the festive state's dinner. Supreme Chaplain Archbishop Lori offered the citation for the Order's Gaudium et Spes Award. It is with great joy and hope for the future of the Sisters of Life and the pro-life movement that the Knights of Columbus recognizes this extraordinary herald of the gospel of life by bestowing its Gaudium et Spes Award upon the founding superior general of the Sisters of Life, Mother Agnes Mary Donovan. Love is possible in our families, in our charitable works, in our parishes, and in your Knights of Columbus councils. The world is searching for it, and it is Jesus whom they seek. Let us receive the gift of God's love that we may be emissaries of Jesus who made such love possible. Wednesday's votive mass of Blessed Michael McGivney was celebrated by Cardinal Daniel DiNardo with Archbishop Patrick Pinder as homilist. Fidelity to the vision and example of Blessed Michael McGivney, we reveal the face of Christ to our world, and Jesus Christ will be live among us. This year also featured a successful ladies' program as more than 500 wives, mothers, and children of Brother Knights came together to grow in their faith. 
Father McGivney's mother was widowed when he, the eldest child, was only 20 years old, and she and his sisters remained a close presence throughout his life. This morning, we thank the Lord for the witness of these McGivney women. Ladies, you can be sure that blessed Michael McGivney is attentive to each of your hearts. One of the things we tell our children is that if you will realize that you are loved, you will be the most powerful person in the world. I think the thing that sets us apart is this radiant love of God. So ladies, this morning you are loved. at a time when the Catholic Church faces serious demographic challenges is the order expanding year after year. I believe the reason is simple. In this age of mediocrity, the Knights of Columbus invites men to greatness, to sacrifice themselves for the good of others. We will continue to take up the mission of evangelization and we will continue our mission of charity, a charity that evangelizes. When Father McGivney created the order, he called us to this life of service. Catholic men rallied to the cause in his time. And in our time, we will inspire a new generation of men on a mission, first in faith and charity. Viva Jesus.